Hello everyone, I am Raghavesh. Welcome to the Embedded Systems video series. Before commencing the video session, I just want to dedicate this video session to an institute called CCCT. This institute located in uh, India and just let me show you where it is located. It's in the northeast India. The state name called as uh, Sikkim. And of course, uh, the institute located in a place called Chisopani, which is very near to the famous tourist spot Darjeeling. It's a beautiful location. And uh, near to that, we have some uh, uh, big city called Namchi as well. And from Namchi, we can reach to a place called Chisopani. And this is the institute. I would like to dedicate this complete video series to this institute. Hope you will continue watching this video throughout the end of the session. The first lecture, we are going to have a course overview and the content what we are going to cover in the complete video series and also the basic hardware and the software things which we are going to discuss in this video and also the overview of 8051 microcontroller. Though it's named as an embedded system, we will be focusing on 8051 microcontroller in this video session. These are some of the book which you can refer. Now basically, what is embedded system? If you look at, you might have learned about a lot of electronic circuits earlier, which comprise of some uh, flip-flops, registers, things like that those circuits doesn't make uh, you know uh, uh, big things like it, it has a specific job if you are having an AND gate it can do only AND gate job whereas when you look at uh, kind of uh, uh, you know applications which we are getting nowadays most of the devices has a kind of intelligence in such case they are supposed to be a supercomputer or a computer which is going to be embedded or hidden inside that product and it's doing the job for us. Uh, of course, uh, as a human being, we can't imagine such things. Uh, it does enormous work, uh, which gives us a lot of comfort. Basically, it has a circuit, that means a kind of microcontroller, things like that, plus other additional circuits, and that has been programmed using a programming language. Okay, so these two, it gives us a kind of you know embedded system okay so embedded system is a kind of merging of hardware and software to accomplish a task and this is our course outline these are the topic which we are going to cover this could be the prerequisite if you are not aware some of them we may be covering up during our you know, uh, delivery as well. Now, what is an embedded system? It contains a one or more programmable computer. Like some places, the task what you look for could be achieved with the help of a single computer. A kind of a small Christmas light or maybe automatic uh, door opener or things like that. It's very uh, simple or even a remote control this is all very simple where you can achieve the task which you are looking for with the help of a single computer that single computer is going to control or monitor it can do both the jobs or it can do either one 
primarily it meant to control an electrical system or a mechanical system in case of remote control it's a very simple uh, device output device is infrared uh, led but still it is sending a signal through that ir led okay so it means whenever we have such setup we, we can say that as a embedded system uh, no matter what is the size is about it's a very small or even the one which is there in your latest smartphones uh, what However, in this category, we refer it as a embedded systems. Okay, whereas uh, there is a uh, you know slight uh, uh, you know change in in terms of computers over here. You can see we use a limited resources as compared to the desktop computers. Uh, desktop computers, you are aware that like we have uh, you know full fledged keyboard and the mouse and even the terms of memory everything. Whereas when it comes to embedded system, the resources are limited. You can see here, the desktop systems will have a hardware and also the kind of firmware loaded on that, and it has a huge memory, and it has a specific operating system. And we install a lot of application programs, and you can also develop uh, things by using the desktop computers. Whereas when it comes to the embedded systems, yes, there is a hardware, there is a firmware. Whereas the application program is going to be specific, we also refer this as a ASIC, application specific integrated integrated circuit. Okay, in some cases, uh, the task which is intended for maybe little complex, in su such cases, they come up with the operating system. Okay, so there are variety of operating systems which we may not cover in this uh, video sessions. Okay, so we discuss here mostly a simple, uh, you know systems and how to develop is what our focus is going to be so this is a basic difference between the embedded system and the desktop system and not only that if you look at the desktop it has a huge memory and also the higher and the speed also whereas the embedded systems some of the embedded systems even runs at one megahertz speed okay so there is a speed difference there's a memory difference and also the task which has been assigned to the system also is different So when we look at, you know, the desktop and the embedded system, these two are the, you know, primary integrated circuits in that, a microprocessor and a microcontroller. The microprocessor is actually a hardware, which is meant only for a kind of arithmetic and logical processing. Um, most of the tasks which you see, even in your computers, the programs are stored in external memory, okay, a, a kind of even let us say it in a simple way like hard disk. The programs are fetched from the hard disk and it, it's being executed, okay. Uh, we'll make it in a simple way. Uh, you can understand in a better way maybe when we finish of this course, okay. Whereas each and every hardware need to be connected properly to perform the operation. Whereas when it comes to the microcontroller, yes, we do have a CPU. That means here also we have a central processing unit. Apart from that, a lot of other peripherals like memory, digital IO devices, timers, and a lot of other peripherals which we are going to discuss uh, soon is all embedded in a single chip. So that's why it is uh, you know comes in a single IC. We we refer it as a microcontroller. It's primarily meant for some small control applications. Okay. This is actually the block diagram of embedded system. It's not necessary we should have all the sub blocks like the primary is CPU and we will have a memory. The variety of memory is there to store our code and also to store some temporary informations and also to store some semi permanent informations. And we will have analog to digital converter. Again, it's not compulsory we have in all microcontrollers. Like in 8051, we may not have uh, ADC in the lower end versions. Okay, so the primary job of analog to digital converter to get the input from the sensors, which will sense the physical quantities and convert them into a digital. Okay, and also we have digital input and output lines. That means uh, the simple push buttons and switches and LEDs, which is uh, you know are connected into the uh, digital I/O lines. And you can see the variety of other hardwares are there. Okay and the primary job of timer and counter you know very well every task in the computers is based on the a specific time 
and you want to perform some counting actions or you want to design some frequency counters things like that then you have to use this timers and counter and we have a serial communication interface which is meant to communicate with the external systems okay and it's also possible to expand the memory though we have a internal memory for a microcontroller if you want to expand the memory it is also possible okay have a look at this, this is a very simple you know application which we can use a microcontroller to develop you can see a kind of electric oven and we need to have a heater to have a uniform heat spread across this chamber we may need to use a fan and there is a temperature sensor generally they may use you know uh, two three to get a, a sample at various locations just here shown as only one so you can just uh, take the sensing from here that means the temperature sensing and then you can make the control action that means to turn on the heater and the fan and things like that okay it's a simple application just see how it can be add a little more you know um, features like is only we have here the set value whatever we set it uh, the temperature is controlled whereas if you want to have some dynamic option that means user wanted to feed the temperature value and you want to control the temperature in such case we need to provide a, a keypad and if you want to display what is a current temperature and also what is a set value and all we need to have a small screen which can be considered as a uh, you know we can consider lcd okay like if the heat goes above and below or some level you want to uh, you know produce a kind of alarm yes we can also have an alarm unit so like this a small system we are developing with the help of a, a small computer so this is called as a microcontroller and also you have a look at one more example here this is like abs it's called like automatic bell system in a school or in a colleges we used to have a bell at regular intervals at the end of every session and also in the morning in a prayer bell at the end of the day like you want to design a kind of automatic system okay so we may have an existing bell system our system should be able to connect to the existing bell circuitry and also we need to have a you know real time clock we need to have a precise timing as uh, you know a drift is not allowed much so we need to have a real time clock there are specific integrated circuits are available as a real time clock we may need to buy and connect to our microcontroller and also a memory the purpose to have memory here to store the alarm time and also if you install the system somebody should not access uh, you know without authentication so we should have a, a kind of password to access to the system and as i mentioned earlier again we can have a lcd from the real time clock i see we can read the timing and we can display it on the lcd also and we can also have a kind of uh, uh, keypad or keyboard in which user can feed the bell timing and the you know the specific bell duration things they can feed here from the keypad if at all you for a remote control option like uh, maybe a, a client software can be developed in a uh, pc using that people can access the bell system through the rs232 serial communication okay so this is again one more example the things what we can develop using a microcontroller this is one more example okay now we will continue this uh, 8051 overview in the second part of this video thank you